this idea of violence and destruction as well might be connected with that primary object. And I think that leads quite nicely back to the doorbell, uh, which is a, a false... Uh, uh, the, the, it's a, do you think it's a bad... The unattainable image of the breast as, a, as this um, uh, false object, the, the false image of the, of the breast. But there's a, there's a piece, there's a piece, a piece that we're using to um, run parallel to this conversation that you made, mm -hmm. called I think called the act of looking, yeah. which is this, which one can look at it as a gorgeous object, but it's more than that because it's mm -hmm. an interpretation of the eton mm -hmm. in a certain sense, and presumably in making it, you're also, do you think you're you're inventing an, another act of looking or another kind of an act of looking? Yeah, that's true. The act of looking, my act of looking is a full-scale uh, drawing of the act of looking through the two, two peepholes uh, on Duchamp's door and it uh, solidifies uh, the rays that start from the eyes and meet uh, the body within that space but all the elements of Duchamp's piece are missing uh, and so it becomes a ghost image of this uh, presence of the look uh, and the way that it appears in the gallery is for then a viewer to be able to experience that act of looking, but not from the point of view that it originates, but from the side. So you're looking... Oh, you mean as you're walking around it? Yeah, you can look, okay. walk around it and experience it from different perspectives. It's a, it's a presence of the look there, uh, that, you, that you walk around and see without anything that has the materiality well, well, without anything to look at. But without anything <laughs> to look at. <laughs> In a certain sense, yeah. which is nice, nice, <laughs> nice one. But there is also, I do notice when people engage with it, they do tend to go to the eye, what they recognise yeah. as the eyes. They look, they dutifully look through those mm -hmm. sometimes. Which I, that's not necessarily the intention of the piece, but it's very interesting that it happens. It's just another position that you can assume, uh, but it's not supposed to be seen from that, from only that uh, point of view. And then, and then, and just, I mean, then thinking about that piece and going back to those two pieces out there, the breast and the window, because the do you think your in terms of this uh, the breast. The breast seems to be fixated in my mind is this wanting to touch and feeling intellectualizing touching without having to, that without having to do it. Some of that, that breast piece does that. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a, what's the sort of what what would be the sort of tactile equivalent to your the act of looking? Or non equivalent um, or I think that it tries it, it attempts to show that there is something in binocular vision that has a tactility within it. Although it's entirely visual, there is a sense of um, touching the object that doesn't exist oh. in in a perspective in a perspective understanding of hearing, where the eyes are blocked by the picture plane. There is a, yeah. an invisible veil that stops the look from actually touching the object. Whereas Duchamp breaks that wall, and that's what's represented by the outline. My act of looking uh, this metal outline that breaks through and allows the gaze to become to sort of go. Is it? It's, it's, I always that think of trying to understand binocular vision by thinking of like sort of almost like the sort of stroking some stroking around the back. Mm. Like it's sort of, but not not with your hands somehow with the, with the, with the, with the optic rays or with the. Mm. The system of vision that you get this. I also see it as weaving as needles starting from the eyes that get into space and weave a three dimensional cloak or a veil that actually is the oh, same so shape as the object. Oh, okay. It's like in, it's like in one of the Star Wars movies when, um, is it Han Solo? <laughs> gets caught in kryptonite and you. You see his profile on this sort of sheet of black stuff. Yeah, it's, well, it's yeah, like it's a sort of yeah. Cut, yeah, yeah. But it's but it's not. But it doesn't have any. It's, it's it doesn't have any actual physical materiality to it. But it's somehow a kind of non-sensuous perception of a sensuous perception. Mm -hmm. That's quite a nice piece of weaving there. Yeah, and 
And I think that um, this uh, mode, this practice of making something which exists in the realm of drawing or model or physical object, uh, in terms of uh, questioning some another piece of work, is something that Duchamp's work suggests, and I, I see it as Definite a continuation of yeah. his practice. It's like making, uh, testing and making physical ideas. It's this idea of the architecture. Um, and it, it's not necessarily only something that exists intellectually, but you need to give it form in order to start well, might. I mean, other it might. I mean, the argument might be that you can't actually conduct research about architecture without making architectures, and you can't make architectures without the matter in some sense being engaged mm -hmm. with, with that making, even though architecture is essentially an intellectual act. And at this point, maybe we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> because Chicky is trapped. Oh, Max. I know we shouldn't stop on architecture. We should we stop on architecture's intellectual act?